Hey guys, we're here. We're gonna be doing something a little bit differently this time. We're not gonna be going through any achievement guide per se, but we're gonna be going through 25 games that you can get all 4,000 gamer score in 24 hours or faster. Now it's all gonna be dependent upon how smooth you can go through these games, how quickly you can, you know, blow through them. Some of these are gonna be some time-based achievements, and it's gonna be the best if you can go through them on your first playthrough. Now I'll be telling you which games that these are. I'm gonna be going through all these games in no particular order. Not by any difficulty or how fast they are. I'm just going to be going through them in the order that I play them in. And I'll be helping you improve on the things where I messed up on. Where I could have gotten all full 25,000 in the 24 hours. But some things happened. So hopefully I can tell you some tricks. That way you don't have to mess them up. And you can get them on your first playthrough. So I'm going to be going through all these games. Like I said, I'll be telling you that there's going to be certain guides for them. Or guides that you won't need for certain games. But that's going to be basically the gist of that. Be going through all these games for you guys so that way you know you may or may not have heard of these games before but if you do a lot of these games they've come out in the last year or so they're half an hour games roughly that you can do pretty quickly so if you see them up if you wanted to go and knock them out all one big run you can do that like I did some of these games are going to be a little more tedious about an hour or so depending upon some of the grindier ones you might be able to knock out so that being said I'm going to be showing you the first game on the list that I played. Alright, so moving on to the first game on the list is a game called Energy Cycle Edge. You may have heard of it before because there's also another game called Energy Cycle. That game is also a very easy game. Quicker than this game, half an hour or so. So, an honorable mention there, you want to substitute this game out for this one or any other game that might not be as fast. You might want to do that one as well. Pretty cheap game, pretty quick and easy. Not as you know, this one's not as doable as that one. So, under this game, Edge, we will be getting achievements for solving your first puzzle. So, what you want to do is you're going to want to go into True Achievements, and they'll have a little step by step guide in the achievements and showing you what you want to do. And they're going to have a diagram for you, and they're going to show you like little square patterns of where to go down and click on them, and how many times. And later in the game, they'll be getting more complex, so you'll be rotating the puzzles. So therefore, this game is more complex than the first one, of course, making it harder and a little longer completion. So for the very first puzzle, you're going to want to go ahead and solve it less than 10 seconds for one achievement. And then you're going to want to solve most of the puzzle. Let's get it ready. And you're just going to want to sit there, look at the clock, make sure you pay attention to that, solve it in 15 minutes, and then you get that achievement. And the rest of the puzzle will be just solving puzzles 1 all the way up to 43. You get all those achievements and for solving all the puzzles. And you also get an achievement once you get into the complex ones where you have that 3D rotating stuff. Like I said, all that complex stuff will come later. So you get an achievement for that. So there's all the achievements for you there. Like I said, the game might take you up to an hour depending upon if you mess up a few times here and there because trying to figure it out from where you clicked on the wrong one or if you clicked not enough times especially when you get into the rotating ones you're going to probably mess it up even more so your best bet is to just back out and start over again and not waste any time on trying to figure it out for yourself a good method to use is if you can keep track of where you are on your game if you have a certain spot you're at you just kind of stare at the diagram in the picture or whatever you're using a laptop or computer to use as a guide you can use that and kind of count the clicks in your head over and down that way you know where you're at without having to look back and forth all the time I would prefer to use the d-pad it's a lot more you know simple to actually click over and down that way you can count your head analog six kind of wonky for making sure you've you know moved over and down smooth enough that way you know where you're at using d-pad so that should do it for end cycle edge we will be moving on to the next game all right, the second game on the list is a game called North. It also just came out this, well, last year now. It's also a pretty quick and easy game. It should only take you about a half an hour, maybe a little bit more than that. So you'll have achievements for listening to a radio, not talking to doctors, learning your new job, finishing your job, not finishing your job, and then your immigration office, you tried it, and then you pass the test for the police, pass the doctors, try to religion, and finish the game. So the fastest way to go about this, if you want to watch a video guide, if you heard about Maka's guides, check his guides out. He's got roughly about half an hour video guide on it, and if you can watch it at the same time we'll play, kind of look back and forth and follow through the game, 
you should you know clock in the game at maybe around 40 minutes or less depending upon if you screwed something up or not now the most tedious part about the game is to finish your job is by grabbing those rocks and collecting them fast enough you'll be wanting to press a certain button to run faster in that area so as long as you can follow and grab those rocks fast enough because it is a bit of a time based achievement if you don't go fast enough you'll have to do it again and it's where I kind of lost a few minutes here and there because I wasn't kind of sure on what and where you're doing so you gotta grab the rocks and after that you just basically walk around the map and you're looking at the cameras that's another thing you gotta do for a story kind of related achievement you'll see these cameras around and you'll be clicking on RS I think on the stick and you'll be doing that for the cameras other than that you just kind of go through the areas and follow what Maka does and you'll have the game done in no time at all around half an hour or so pretty quick and easy game not really a lot of content to the game one of them super easy games of the year so it'll be number two in the list and we'll be moving on to the next game we're going to game three on the list is a game called storm boy also in the game that came out last year towards the end of the year probably one of the quickest games of the year also another game that should take you around half an hour or so it shouldn't take you really that long at all the achievements are as follows you'll have three pelicans get angry while feeding them in minigame so that's what a lot of these achievements are is you'll just be walking along the beach and you'll see these objects that you can interact with which are all these little mini games for all these achievements basically and be in the game so you'll have one for that you have one for saving the sailors from the sinking ship. You have Mr. Percival fetch a ball from underwater three times. You have to swim to the deepest part of the ocean. Find 20 cockles. Play each mini game once throughout the remember menu. So that is after you've beaten the game, you go back to the main menu. You will have a remember menu to go through, and you'll just have to go through every little mini game that you've already gone through on your first little kind of playthrough, whatever you want to call it. You've gone through the game, and you'll be going through all those again. You don't actually have to play any of them. All you gotta do is click in the menu, click in the mini game, let it load up, and then just back out. And that's all you have to do, which will be your last part of the game for your last achievement. You'll have to get one for feed three pelicans once. You have to get one for change direction in the sanctuary dream mini game 15 times. You have to leave an artwork on the beachfront. Stay underwater for the max amount of time. And basically, the secret achievement at the end is say goodbye to Mr. Percival, which is at the end of the game and it's story related so once you beat the game you'll get that so there's all those achievements also the fast way to get this game done and if you want to follow a guide Maka has also got a guide for this one as well so you can go watch that same thing as last time as long as you watch the guide and kind of play at the same time and keep up with the video you should you know run the achievement guide around half an hour or so maybe less depending upon if you want to run through yourself as long as you know what you're clicking on the background you get these little interactable objects like I said for the minigame so as long as you kind of know what you're looking for you could probably do it even quicker without a guide that way you don't got to sit there and kind of wait for the guide or rewind it or whatever you have you to do anything as long as you know what you're doing for each minigame you get your thousand in no time and that's wrap it up for game three and we'll be moving on to the next game moving on to game four on the list is a game called One-Eyed Cooth I think I'm saying it right I'm not 100% sure also another game that came out last year also a very very quick and easy game roughly around 30 minutes it shouldn't take you up to an hour it should take you a little bit less than that <clears throat> especially if you're walking through with a guide another guide done by Maka as well so you watch that you just walk through the game with him follow what he's doing side by side as long as you do it real time without pausing or backtracking you should really take around maybe up to 40 minutes at the very very most you got really really easy achievements so you got an achievement for a cause a quarrel between the sun and the moon which is basically story related if you were going through the game without a guide you have one for reconciled reconcile excuse me reconcile wow reconcile the sun and moon story related also if you're going to the game which cannot be missed so some of the missable ones here we have is found all exits in the labyrinth so you'll be coming a little bit midway into the game here you'll be crawling through a hole and you basically gotta go through these exits through all these exits before you go to the top one so you go through all the sides and then you go to the top one last and get the achievement another missable achievement is press the same button four times in a row so once you will be at the beginning of the game at the very very beginning you press that same button four times before you do anything else in the game you do that 
that's also a missable one so you make sure you do that before you move on and you get that one out of the way another missable one is all dreams which is in the same area as finding all of the exits so once you go through all these exits you'll be going through this little dream sequence on the last one and they'll pop after that and before you go with egg, the, into the last exit you'll get that one afterwards <clears throat> so you get another one that is missable for refuse to give man a boat three times in a row which is at the very end of the game basically you will have options to give him a boat and you basically don't do that for three times and you will get that achievement you have one ever visited a bear three times so once you are in control of not your main character, you'll be having another little character controlled of this kind of like the guy with the Eskimo hoodie thing on. You'll be going through the game with him climbing up a tree. So as long as you go and find the polar bear, which is towards the top of the tree, and you go to him three times, you get that achievement as well. Another one that's missable is all ends of the branches reached. So in that same area where you plant that same character, basically go all the way to the left and all the way to the right on every single branch as you climb up that tree and you should get that one as well another missable one is worried ermine which is a little creature I don't know what it is <laughs> when you're as the human again you will go up these branches so as long as you go all the way over to him past the seesaw on that branch you will see at the very end all the way to the left it takes a few tries, it seems like, if you try to click on it as you are approaching it, you should be able to get the Chiba and no big deal. Another one is for touching the fish, which is also in that same area as you will be playing as a human on that tree. I'm pretty sure it's on the right side at some point when you'll be climbing up. I think it's on one of the very first few branches on the way up the tree. So as long as you go over to the right and then you click on the fish, you will also get that achievement as well. But if you want to follow Maka's guides, that's pretty simple and straightforward right there. So as long as you follow that, you shouldn't be able to miss any achievements and you should get the game done in around four minutes or less. And that should be done for game four. We'll be moving on to the next game. We'll be moving on to game number five on the list, which is a game called Jack and Jill DX. You may have may not have heard of it. Another game that came out last year towards the end of the year in September. Another pretty easy quick game. It should only take you 30 minutes for, sh for sure. Shouldn't be any longer than that. You, know, you don't really need a guide for the game. As long as you go through the game, you should be able to get all the achievements pretty dang fast. So you have an achievement for finding Jack or Jill, because you can pick Jack or Jill in the game. Doesn't even matter. Just go through the game, basically play your first level. Can't really be missed. You'll get to the end of the level and that achievement will pop. <clears throat> Another achievement is for dying once, trying to find Jack or Jill. So whenever you, you get past the first couple levels, you'll be able to fall off. So just fall off and you'll get that achievement. And obviously you'll get one for completing the level, which you'll get right at the beginning of the game so complete that level there's an achievement for completing the world which there's 20 levels in world one so as long as you go through those 20 levels you'll get that achievement as well and you'll get one for unlocking a mini game and you will unlock a mini game once you finish the first world so once you finish the first world and you unlock the mini game you're gonna want to go back out to the main menu and you want to play mini game that's another achievement so play mini game achievement so you're gonna want to play a mini game for a while and get a bunch of tickets. I think you need to get like 25 tickets so you can buy a hat in there. So you will get a shop ticket achievement. So once you play the mini game and finish the mini game, you will get a shop ticket for an achievement. And then you will go into the store and you'll get 25 shop tickets when you do the mini game and you'll be able to buy a hat. So buy something in the store is another achievement. Also, when you're going through the game for your first world, you'll get an achievement for getting your first coin. You'll get a shield for getting 250 coins, which you should roughly be trying to collect, you know, throughout your first world. So that way you don't got to backtrack into the levels of the world. And last but not least, the last achievement is to bounce on an enemy by squishing them. So as soon as you see the enemy, and then the first little segment in the first world is 116. So once you find an enemy, those little things that look like they're popping on the ground, all I gotta do is just jump on them. And once you jump on them, Press A again to bounce off of them, and you will get your last achievement. Pretty easy game. Like I said, it should only take you about a half an hour or so. Shouldn't take you any longer than that. You don't really need any guides. Just kind of look at the achievements if you get kind of confused on what you need to do. Basically, all you gotta do is run through the world, jump off enemy, die, do your mini games, and buy something. And it's as easy as that, and that game will be done pretty dang quick. Alright, we'll be moving on to the next game on the list. 
All right, moving to game six on the list is a game called Assemblance. Also, another game that came out last year at the beginning of the year. This game has a total of 10 achievements. Now, if you haven't noticed, all of the achievements so far have only been 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, and Energy Cycle Edge had 20. Ones for beating every single level. So, all these games are roughly pretty quick on achievements, not very much to them. But moving on to the guide itself for this game, it's basically got 10 achievements, most are story related. You get one for the loop, which is story related. And also, if you want to follow a guide, which is probably preferable in this case, that way you can run through it pretty quick. It should only take you roughly half an hour to an hour. It only took me around 40 minutes or so. The game was pretty easy. Just as soon as you know, you load it up, watch Maka's guide. He's got the guide for this. As long as you don't mess up a few things here and there, which can be can be kind of tricky. There is some things in it towards the end of the game where you have to have a stopwatch to where you'll be timing yourself to do this little trick with the drawer, pulling it open, and going to a wall and timing it around the spot to click on it to get the last bit of the game done. So other than that. The game isn't too bad, that's the only thing you can really mess up on, so it might take a few tries to get that, otherwise the game can be done a little quicker than that. But back to the achievements, you have another one for AI Shutdown, which is also story-related and cannot really be missed. You have one for, called Nice Try, which is also another story-related one. You have another one called Your Mind, which is missable, which is the first missable one on the list here. So you'll be getting this one after your Nice Try, which is going back to the terminal. And trying to shut them off again so basically you'll you'll get this if you watch Marcus guides you have another one called the truth which is story related and can be missed you have one called blue which is another story related one can be missed you have one called green story related can be missed you have one that's called white which is also story related and can be missed and this is the one where it gets tricky because you will be going through what I said is that timing the clock so what this blue, white, and green ones are is these shifts that you'll be unlocking later on in the game that you'll be able to see the color, the tint of your game be changing colors and you'll be going through and getting multiple endings basically to get the true ending of the game. And another achievement in the game which is Illumination, which is story related, and the Infinite Loop which is all story related. So as long as you follow Maka's guides and you don't mess up too much and you play in real time and keep up with it you get the game done in 40 minutes the ending one here with the white one is a bit of a tricky one with the stopwatch so you will need a stopwatch to time everything just perfect so as long as you do all that the game should take you around 40 minutes and that should do it for that game and we'll be moving on to the next game game 7 on the list as you probably may have guessed we're going to be doing a semblance oversight I saved them both for this occasion this game also came out last year later in the year Another game with only 10 achievements. This game should take you about the same as the first one. It might take you a little bit longer, roughly maybe around an hour or so. It took me up to an hour because the game is a little bit tricky. It's not as hard as tricky as the stopwatch in the first one, but in the sense of if you mess up at the end, when you're looking at this bulletin board, when you go into green shift mode, and they supposed to look at the picture you think, but you don't. You look up at the tack above it, which screwed me up so I had to do it multiple times because it was screwed up and I also watched Maka's guides on this one as well to get you through the game pretty quickly the game just takes a little bit longer in the sense of that you have these multiple endings to go through so the achievements are as follows you have the anomaly which is story related it cannot be missed you have cinematics cinematics yep you story related cannot be missed as well so most are you know, unmissable, of course. Departure can't be missed. The superior can't be missed. Coherence, which it can be missed, but as long as you follow Maka's guides, you'll be just basically going through this and getting this as well. You'll be getting this after the departure achievement solution. So as soon as you get the departure one, this will be shortly afterwards. Then you have ones for blue, green, white, all these shifts, gamma, oversight as well which is following the coherence your last shift ending will be the gamma for the time being until you get the later ones so you have gamma which is another ending so oversight like I said after coherence which will be your last one so once you go through all these other shifts like I said the game basically takes a while because you gotta go through all these different endings of shifts 
and it can be tricky like I said as long as you pay attention to Maka's guides you're going through this game and getting all these in that order and getting all the shifts and like I said the last room when you're looking at this map when you have to go into green shift mode look at the map to find it just make sure you look above the area of where the picture's at not the actual picture of itself but like the actual tack for some reason it seems to set it off when you get close to it and you find that picture of the boy so make sure you do that and you shouldn't have any problems knocking the game out within an hour or so hopefully you didn't mess up that too many times so that's where one of my little mistakes was was not knowing where to look because it is time based and if you don't look at the right spot it seems to mess up and you gotta do it over again and you gotta go back into a couple steps backwards to make sure that you get that code off of those pictures and then you go on the computer look at the code make sure you rewrite it down again and then you gotta seems like you gotta go through that terminal to be able to activate it and once you go through it again you gotta be able to go through it again to actually turn it back on to go enter that code that you had that was specific towards getting to that room so you gotta do some backtracking so that's exactly where I messed up and the game ended up being a long it was supposed to be but as long as you don't mess that up the game should be done pretty quick and we're moving on to the next game Alright, moving on to game 8, it's a game called Transference, which is also personally my favorite games that I went through in this run. Not bad, I mean I just skipped through most hours to do the speed run and make it quick, but for the most part, it was enjoyable to follow through, it wasn't no big deal. Another one of Maka's guides he does in the game, so it's pretty easy to follow, and the game shouldn't take you any SPN time over an hour. As long as you follow what he does, you should be able to run through and be able to grab everything and all the codes early on without having to really solve anything. So that's where the time actually comes in. If you don't know what you're doing, if you want to enjoy the story, you know, you gotta get the codes for certain things and grab some collectibles. So the game will take you roughly a couple hours if you do it that way. But if you watch Maka's guides and the order he does everything in, you should be able to knock the game out in a half an hour, roughly maybe a little bit more, not too much more than 40 minutes or so. So this game has got 14 achievements. So you basically get an achievement for players find all the collectible video logs in the game. You find all the audio logs. So there's separate ones here. You have videos and audio logs, which is for two different achievements there. You have one to find the picture of Raymond Hayes, the undergraduates. So those are all the non-secret ones. So you have all the secret ones, which are all still related, which is the player has successfully uncorrupted the lobby. You get one for uncorrupting the apartment entrance door. You get one for the player that's placed the first crystal in the machine. And then you uncorrupt the kitchen. You get one for uncorrupting the dining room. You get one for placing your second crystal in the machine. Then you'll get one for uncorrupting the music room, uncorrupting the living room, and the third crystal in the machine. And then you have to get you'll get one for facing the monster with the fourth crystal. And then you get one for the player has reached the end of the game. So that is that. The game is pretty simple and straightforward. As long as you follow Maka's guides, you'll be getting all the collectibles, the crystals, all the story related stuff for uncorrupting everything pretty quick and easy. Video guide's really easy to follow, and you should be able to knock this game out in a half an hour. The game is pretty short and simple, and there isn't much more to it than that. And we'll be moving on to the next game. Right, we move on to game number nine, which is a game called Tacoma. This game came about a couple years ago now, kind of on the spender side. I think I forgot to mention that transference is also on the spendy side. But anyway, back on to this game. This game will take you roughly around an hour or so. It's kind of one of the longer ones. So, like I said, Energy Cycle, the first one, if you want to substitute out one of these longer ones to make even more out of this run if you want to, you can do that here. This is one of the longer ones. It should take you maybe an hour or 45 minutes or so. Another one of Maka's Guides games you can do. So, if you follow in this game, you have 12 achievements to do in this game for some collectibles and story related achievements as well so you get one for escaping the learn transfer station to come ahead and reach every AR crew record and AR desktop item so one of the collectibles which you'll be going through and finding all the crew members in the game and finding all of their recoverable information basically and you'll be finding their computers in the rooms and just kind of bring up the items on there and then that's it for those so as long as you follow the guide, you should be getting all of those. You're getting one for made a three-point shot in the micro G basketball. So as soon as you get a hold of character in the game, you'll be coming down in like a hallway in space. Everything will be floating around, of course. So you have to do that. You have to change this court to a three-point shot and make it easier. And you can go ahead and dunk it. It should count for the achievement as well. So that's one way to get that achievement. 
Another collectible in the game is finding all the AR cats and every recovered crew record on the station. So, it's, you know, as long as you follow Maka's guides on that, you should be able to find all the cats. There isn't very many of them in the game, so it's pretty easy to do that. You'll get one for restore the obsolescence day sign. So, you'll find that, which will basically say something about Tacoma, yada, 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 happy birthday, whatever have you. You'll basically be finding the letters. So, you'll find those letters, and then you'll be going through that, put them on the board, which is also a pretty easy achievement. You'll be getting one for escaping the Lunar Transit Station. Tacoma have been correctly opened every key code lock on the station. So following through Maka's guides, you'll be getting all the key codes early on to save you some time. So you don't gotta worry about that. You'll get one for escaping the Lunar Station with Odin, which is story related and it cannot be missed. These are all the secret ones, by the way. You'll get one for activating Juliet and re reunite her with the Romeo in Zero G. So once you'll be getting later on in the game. You can save it, you can do this beginning if you want, but you find this other robot, activate it, and then you're gonna find the other robot and just throw it at it and you get that achievement. You will get one for retrieve Bert's wedding ring in the station. This is about mid way through the game, you'll be going kind of underneath these grates. It's very hard to see, but it's you know, it's not you follow Maka's guide to so show you where it's at. It's still kind of a pain in the ass to even see. You'll be basically underneath of it under these grates and look it up above your head. You will get one for a go full round with a punching bag in the gym. So once you find the punching bag in the gym, just go hit that until your guys are tired out, and then you'll get the achievement for that. You will get one for escaping Tacoma, having read all incoming messages from Ventress. So every single email you get, make sure you wait till it finishes popping up on the screen, and kind of click on it a few times to kind of verify that you've read it. You will get one for a gay Tina back her hat and her head. So halfway through the game or so, you'll find the skeleton head and the skeleton in the closet and this hat. So as long as you put the skeleton head back on the set and the hat on it, follow Maka's guide to get an achievement for that. And you will get one for working together with Tina to make a particularly spooky basket. So after completing the skeleton one, you will take the head off and you'll carry it back into the zero G where you have the basketball and you will dunk that into the basketball net for another achievement. And that should do it for Tacoma. As long as you follow this guide, you should be able to get all these pretty easy, around an hour or so. And that should do it for that game. We'll move on to the next game. Moving on to game number 10 is a game called Haunted Halloween. Also came out last year in 2018 in August. This game is really easy considering that you don't have to finish the entire game. It should only take you around 15 to 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour at the most, depending upon how much you've actually gotten your extra lives achievement. So, We'll be getting the achievement for getting hurt 25 times, which is cumulative, so in all your playthroughs it all adds up and start a brand new game, so that's why it's easy, you don't have to go through one game and do all this stuff. So kill 10 enemies is another achievement, kill 20 enemies is another achievement, kill 30 enemies is another achievement, kill 50 enemies is another achievement, earn 3 lives, 6 lives, 9 lives, 10 lives, are all achievements, and you get your last achievement for getting the game over. Now there is an achievement guide under Maka's guide if you want to follow it. Not really necessary. So all you gotta do is get far enough into the game to where you can actually collect lives. I don't remember per se exactly how far into the guide it was. There's a certain level not too far into the game where you can get an extra life on top. And then it's the beginning of this like, cavern area. You can be able to climb up there, grab the extra life, jump down below, kill yourself, set over. You're not too far from the beginning of the level. So you can get your 10 lives doing that. And the cumulative of 50 enemy kills for all your other kills. You can just get all those depending upon if you want to get them all going through extra lives and killing some things along the side or just a brand new game and cure everything your achievements. And then once you get the game over, that'll be the end of the game and you're a thousand within 20 minutes or so. Pretty easy. That should really do it for this game. We're moving on to the next game. The game number 11 is a game called Tetris Escape. This is another game that came out in 2018 in August as well. 21 achievements for this game. A little bit more than the average for 10, 12, and 11 or so. So there's a little bit more in this game to go for. It's not so bad. It should only take you roughly an hour or so. There is a guide for this under Bad Driver, if you've heard of him. He's also got some pretty decent guides as well. So, moving on to the achievements. You'll be getting an achievement for completed World 1, World 2, World 3, World 4, World 5. World 6 and you will be getting achievements for collecting the stars that are in the game as well so as long as you collect 25% of the stars 50% of the stars you'll be getting those two achievements with that 
and then you'll be getting achievements for grabbing your first cup, 25% of the cups, and half of the cups as well. Another achievement to get, you know, saving 10 tetras, 100 tetras, 200 tetras. You'll be getting achievement for 1,000 moves, 2,500 moves, and then you get one for your first transformation into uh, Tetramino. You will get one for an early death, which is death before the level is even explained. And there's guides for all of these as well by Bad Driver. I should go through this entire game for you and show you how to get all of these. You will get one for an achievement called the and now, which is change all chapters in a level into a Tetraminos, and then you gotta lose. And you gotta complete a level without any stars. So, and then your last gym is to burn all Tetras in the same level. So, there is basically a guide, or picture guides for all this stuff. It's not too complex. The last thing you're probably gonna do after you do all these failing ones, and then, you know, turning everything into the same thing at one level, is basically you're going to be doing your saving 200 tetras and your your moves basically so you love a certain level you can do whichever one you want like I said he does that in his video too explains at the end he'll just you know show you how to save some tetras real quick and then it's really easy short level you go through that just repeat and save them over and over again and after you get that achievement you can literally just run back and forth because those count as your moves so all you gotta do is basically let's keep walking back and forth to get your last achievement and you'll have your thousand at about an hour or so depending upon how quickly you go through the puzzles some of them can be solved pretty easy by yourself probably faster than working on a guy unless you really don't know what you're doing in the game which can be kind of confusing at first but that's pretty much you for that game we'll be moving on to the next game all right moving on to game number 12 this is a game called midnight deluxe another game that came out last year in october now there's also a video guide by a bad driver on this one as well he'll be going through the levels that you need to complete to get all the achievements so you can follow the video guide for that as well to help you go through this this game will take you roughly an hour or so not too much more than that if you have some problems in the levels might trip you a little bit, trip you up a little bit so you might want to watch the video to kind of know what you're doing unless you want to have some fun with it it's not too bad of a game kind of like angry words game just launch your character across the map to get to their side so your achievements are complete level one you get three stars in one level Bump into one of the Midnight's friends, die by a saw, die by getting out of a level, die by a spike, die by a laser, complete 5 levels, complete 10 levels, complete 20 levels, complete 40 levels, pull a lever, and complete level 4 making Midnight's friends smile. So basically all your achievements are related to beating the levels and dying. A lot. You get the concept of this game. You are going to be dying quite a bit especially try to figure all the levels by yourself without having an idea of what to really do if you're gonna play this game before so you gotta kinda rely on how hard you pull back and launch your character and timing of things so thought you better the game showing take your graph a little over an hour or so depending upon how many complications you have in dying and if you also help you out if you get that complete level four making midnight's friend smile right off the bat I end up missing it and not catching that achievement right away because you can do that at the same time you can get the bump into one of Midnight's friends, obviously, so get those at the same go. That'll save a little bit of time as well, so keep that in mind. By the time you reach the last level, you should get your last achievement, and you should backtrack. And that should do for that game, we'll move on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 13, is a game called Her Majesty Spiffing. Now you may have heard of it, it's been out for a while, since December 7th of 2016. This game should only take you roughly a level over an hour or so if you watch Maka's guides and do that. Otherwise, without the guy, it should take you over three hours or more. So, moving on to the achievements. You shouldn't miss any of these achievements if you watch Maka's guides. There will be multiple of these achievements where you have to do like a save and then backtrack to the save because you can get two achievements with the same object or same area with two different little split ends. So, bear that in mind. Watch the video guide through and through. You should have no problems. So, the achievements are commence your first your mission on board the HS HMSS Imperialize I'm not gonna go through in depth through all the achievements because there's a lot of things you gotta grab things do things and it'll take too long to describe all that but next one will be look intently at sub lieutenant Jones very beginning of the game so as well before that a little bit in the game beginning talk to Greta about the British villains which is like three minutes into the game Give Sub Lieutenant Jones English's tea, which is about seven minutes into a game. And this is where you'll be making your first manual save and you'll be doing two achievements here. 
You get one for crashing into ejected fuel cell when the controls of the H. MSS Imperialize, which is about nine minutes in the game. You should be able to push a bunch of buttons and run into a box in space, basically. Uh, locate the paperclip, which is also two minutes into the game. Ensure no one can erase the driver, which is like 13 minutes into the game. Wake up Sub Lieutenant Jones, about 16 minutes into the game. This is where you have to make another manual save to get out of the couple achievements. Break a sweat when using the treadmill. Use it like a boss. Those two are tied together with also two different achievements we have to do another manual save you need to crash a tabletop football player 11 minutes into the game find a replacement motor when asked it's like half an hour in the game about 21 minutes about halfway through the game about another manual save part look at the French camp when driving the Beagle 2-2 about 25 minutes into the game examine all the rocks on the plant surface about half an hour in the game Observes Scrooge's cat both alive and dead. You can do this multiple times whenever you go into this room, so about 20 minutes into the video, or if you can do it again, then if you missed it. Soothe a group of frogs asleep, half an hour into the game. There's a couple of steps here for a couple of achievements in that same area. That's the same room with a cat. So acquire a second block of cheese, 3 to 5 minutes in the game. Place washing liquid inside the washing machine before it's activated, which is inside the French ship. So that's 38 minutes into the game. Some secret achievements are examine the gravity simulation switch, which is very beginning of the game, or three minutes into the game. Attempt to mix washing liquid and tea, five minutes into the game. Summon a power of Grey Skull to distract Antonine and Pure, which is like half an hour in the game. Maybe it was Earth all along, which is 26 minutes into the game. Fail to catch a frog when they're asleep, so that's when you put them to sleep. If you fail to catch one right at the bat there, they get one there, three or five minutes in the game or so. You have one for save the game prior to using a typewriter. I think this is in Screwdinger's room. I'm not sure. It's 20 minutes in the game. Complete, obviously, the game. Her Majesty's Piffing, the Empire Staggers Back. Ha ha, on the Star Wars pun there, right? That should do it. Like I said, it should only take you a little over an hour to ping up on missing the game at the backtrack or forget to do manual saves, which could really screw up. So don't forget to mention do that. And we will be moving on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 14. A game called Super Destronaut DX. Another game that came out last year in July of 2018. Another quick, easy game under an hour. Shouldn't take you any more than an hour, depending upon how much you have problems with the challenge mode stuff. Now, there can be a bunch of challenges that might trip you up, but you can skip them because there's a decent amount of challenges to do overall, so you don't have to do them all. Just enough to get the achievement. I think you need only 12. Yeah, 12 of them to unlock the achievements related to this game mode. So the game should take you roughly 20 to 40 minutes. Depending upon the challenge mode, it might trip you up. So you might end up maybe pushing an hour at the very, very most. Hopefully, you shouldn't take anything longer than that. You don't really need a guide. Because all you gotta go is do is go through all the game modes. Hardcore, classic, time attack, and challenge mode. So the achievements are kill one enemy. Die one, complete one challenge, complete three challenges, complete six challenges, and complete seven challenges. So that should do it for all of your challenge mode. You'll be moving on to classic mode, so you'll be reaching 25k, 50k, and 100k in classic mode. And that should do it for classic mode. You'll be moving on to attack mode, time attack mode, excuse me. So you gotta reach 10k in time attack mode. And that should do it for time attack mode. That is it for that game mode. And for hardcore mode, all you gotta do is reach 1k in hardcore mode. And another achievement is hit one of the gray enemies, which is one of these little gray ones that kind of come floating down in between the other ones every so often. So keep your eyes peeled for those. All you gotta do is take one of them out for that achievement. You should just automatically probably get it without even paying any attention to it when you're just going for the challenges. And your last achievement is kill one special red enemy, which is the ones at the very, very top. They give you the weapons and shit. So pretty easy there. As long as you can complete the challenge mode stuff pretty easily, the rest of the game will fall pretty quick. That should do it for that game. We'll be moving on to the next game. All right, moving on to game number 15. This is a game called Full Blast. Another game that came out last year at the end of the year in September. Also a pretty little fun game. Another 13 achievement game, just like Super Desert 9 DX. Kind of like the same concept. That was kind of like a Space Invaders kind of classic take on. This one's more like one of them flying shooters. We got to go around Dodger thing. Also, quick mention if you guys noticed that a lot of these games I played are made by the same companies and published by the same companies, which is pretty hilarious to spit out all these easy thousand games. Alright, back to the game. Another really easy game that should only take you an hour, just like the last game. 
maybe a little quicker than that depending upon how fast you can blow through the areas that's pretty much going to be your last few achievements you get depending upon if you do the first a couple times over or if you actually blow through them all and blow them up don't really matter either way I end up you know going through all of the areas kind of like the last thing I kind of end up repeating the first area a couple times get some kills and rack it up stuff like that and then end up beat the last areas and now it's done the game so all you're gonna do is complete area one for achievement complete area two for achievement complete area three for achievement and each area has a boss at the end of it so you'll be killing an area boss from the achievement you get a achievement for killing a manta you get a achievement for killing a hundred scorpions you get a achievement for killing fifty mosquitoes you get a achievement for killing fifty butterflies and twenty five butterflies so there's two achievements for those you get a achievement for killing twenty five spiders you get another achievement for killing fifty spiders you get an achievement for using a bomb attack and you get an achievement for obtaining a power up so at the beginning of the game if you want to get the achievement on the way just spam the B button use your bomb you'll, you'll eventually see power ups flying around it'll be pretty obvious you'll see them after you destroy some enemies you're going to want to grab that make your ship better so you're going to grab that grab the achievement and as you go through these areas depending upon if you end up failing the first area and doing it a couple of times over and then if that's okay if you do that it's no big deal because if you do that and as long as you keep killing all that enemies and getting to the boss at least, you'll be at least racking up the kills for the spiders and the butterfly, which will be taking the most time up. Uh, the mosquitoes and scorpions and all some of the other ones aren't too bad, considering that you get them a lot more often. I'm pretty sure the butterflies and the spiders are the ones you don't get quite as often. So you basically, if you end up failing a couple times in the first level, no big deal. Don't feel like you're wasting your time, because you'll be going through the areas, a couple areas after that. By the time you get to area 3, you'll be done, but if not, just go back through the first one and mop it up. You don't need to play through your whole entire game to do anything, so... That's what you do for that game. We will be moving on to the next game, guys. Moving on to game 16. It's a game called Paladin. You may or may not have heard of this one as well. It's been out for a while, since December of 2017. This game really tripped me up because of one of the achievements in here for racking up the money. Now, I don't know if I just wasn't grabbing it fast enough and too worried about losing lives and dying but the game should only take you an hour if not less if uh, you have the option to begin the game I don't remember that because I just picked the very first ship you get I would pick the second ship in my opinion it just seems to be a little better in the firepower is just the way it shoots is just to me it was overall a little bit nicer so if you want you can try the second ship if it's available at the beginning of the game which it should be able to so try that out and see if that makes your play through a little bit quicker. I ended up playing the game for a couple hours because I didn't get enough money. And ended up going to the game basically twice. So there were some farming methods for the money that didn't seem to really work by killing the very last boss on hard the last second and changing the difficulty. Didn't seem to really be working. So I just ended up going through it a couple times. So if you do it the second ship try to grab all of the money you can as soon as you kill enemies you might be dying a lot more but I think it all keeps the track of it it's in total you don't have to worry about when you die that you lose it so no big deal there just try not to die as much so you can get to the game a little quicker so your achievements are as follows fill the rage count to 25 percent get an achievement for it. collect a total of $1,500 cash another achievement for fill the rage count at 50 percent Another achievement for a score a total of 25,000 points. You get one for kill all aliens level 5. You get one for filling the rage counter 75%. You get one for a score a total of 50,000 points. Another one for collect a total of $5,000 cash. You get another one for filling the rage counter to 100%. You get one for killing a boss at the end of level 10. You get one for a score a total of 100,000 points. Another one for kill all aliens at level 15. Another one for kill boss at the end of level 20. Another one for kill all aliens at level 25. Another one for kill a boss at the end of level 30. Another achievement for killing, excuse me, collecting a total of $50,000 cash. And killing all aliens at level 35. Scoring a total of 500,000 points. Collecting a total of $100,000 cash. And for killing the boss at the end of level 40. So basically, it's all the same achievements. Redone and redone. And redone. So you'd be going to the game, killing all the bosses, obviously killing all the enemies at every level for their achievements, and killing the bosses for the end of those achievements. Make sure you go with the game on easy. That just makes it look quicker. Unless you want more cash. 
it's up to you. Like I said, that second chip might help out a little bit. So if you want, you know, rack up the money probably a little bit quicker, go ahead and put it on a little higher level if you want. So basically, just getting points, killing your thing, beating the game, and racking up the money. So hopefully, you get the money quicker than I did. That seemed to be the problem for me. It took me the most time. That should do it for this game, guys. We move on to the next one. All right, moving on to game number 17. This is a game called Rememoried, also a game that's been out for a couple years now, on December 6th of 2017. Forgot to mention in the last one, the 20 achievements in Paladin, 10 achievements in Rememoried. Also, you don't need a guide for Paladin, but you might need a guide for Rememoried, just to make things a little bit quicker in the game. The game should want to take you roughly around an hour or so, and Maka does have a guide on it, if you want to watch Maka's guide on that, to make it a little bit quicker. That way you could run through the game and kind of have an understanding of what you're going to be doing and what to look for, which could also help you to run through it just a little bit easier to have a little better understanding. Now the achievements are basically beating all the levels. So you'll get one for your Deja Vu, which is beating level 4 and 5. Your Illusion, which is beating level 6, 7, and 8, 9. Your Affinity, which is beating level 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Finish level 1 achievement, finish level 2 achievement, finish level 3 achievement, finish level 11 achievement, finish level 12 achievement, finish level 13 achievement, and finish all. So, basically, all story related, non missable, as long as you go through the game and you will be beating this. And you will be getting all your achievements. And a thousand within an hour or so, it shouldn't take you too long. The game is pretty easy, and once you mess up on the puzzles, you can start it over. It's not too hard. It's basically a game where you look at something and it doesn't match what you want. You gotta turn around a couple times to get to where you need to be. It's as simple as that. There isn't much more to the game than just basically getting from point A to point B. And that is about it to the game. We will be moving on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 18. It's a game called The Station. This game has 11 achievements. The game came out February of last year of 2018. This game takes you less than an hour. There is a guide on Maka's guides for it. Some other guy did it for him. It's a pretty easy, quick game. It should literally take you less than an hour. It shouldn't take you very long at all. The game is pretty quick. I would say maybe half an hour, four or five minutes at the very, very most. There are some missable achievements. So as long as you watch the video guide along, you know, play it live action and need to pause it here and there, then go for it if you want to. If you have the collectibles, make sure you don't miss them. So the achievements are as follows. You find Aiden's ID bracelet, which is a missable achievement. Uh, find Mia's ID bracelet. This is a story-related bracelet, which is, you know, obviously not admissible. Find Scylla's ID bracelet. This is another story-related one that can't be missed. Now, you open Mia's locker, which is a missable achievement. And there are codes on the video, so you will be able to get that. There is the achievement for open Aiden's locker, which is missable, and the code is also in the video, so don't worry about that either. I did achievement for repairing the engine, which is story related and can't be missed. Repair the maintenance robot, which is also a story related achievement and can't be missed. There is achievement for complete all puzzles, which is missable, and obviously, as long as you follow along the video guide and do everything they do, you will be able to get that pretty easily. There is an achievement for listening to all audio logs, which is obviously a missable achievement. But as long as you watch the video guide, you'll be able to find all 24 of those. And they're all pretty easy to find within pretty close parameters of each other, so it's not too complicated. And you get an achievement for finishing the game, obviously non-missable. And land in the SPL, which is also a non-missable achievement. The game is pretty quick and easy, about 4 or 5 minutes or so. I should wrap it up for this game, and we will be moving on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 19, which is also a series as well, is the Journey Down Under games. We are going to be starting with Chapter 1, which came out in June last year, 2018. Now this game could take you anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, but as long as you watch a video guide, Maka also has one of these as well. You should be able to get the game done pretty quick, under an hour, for the achievement related to that. Now I kind of fucked this up, ended up rewinding the video a couple times, and missing some things, and trying to get the game down. It can also be kind of a bit of a pain in the ass to get the understanding of getting it done fast and efficiently. 14 achievements in the game, and here's the achievements for you. 
it is the one if completing the game in 40 minutes or less so this is a pretty quick and easy game as long as you watch the video guide there are also other people that do the video guide for this game as well so your choice of who you want to watch but the game is doable in under 40 minutes so there you go for that pretty quick and easy game so achievement for that there's an achievement for completing the game there's an achievement for completing the puzzle in the engine room in less than three minutes which is a missable achievement so be prepared for that there's an achievement for giving the propeller to Kito, which is still related to can't be missed there is an achievement for getting the engines for the plane which is still related to can't be missed there is an achievement for getting the steering wheel still related to can't be missed there is an achievement for repairing the anchors wench which is still related to can't be missed there is an achievement for the that was not supposed to happen, which is story related can't be missed. An achievement for those pesky pests, which is story related can't be missed. There is one called Complete Mama Makin Secret Spice Mix, which is story related can't be missed. Now, on to the secret achievements. Look at the painting of Ko and Dodo in the character's waiting room. Charge character, yeah, charge waiting room, excuse me. Which is a non missable achievement. You'll get one for a look at the photography of Kanadodo and Buana in the Carter's room. Charter's room, Jesus Christ, excuse me. This is also non missable. So, moving on to the next one, look at Kido's photographics on the plane, which is also non missable. And you got the look at the graffiti, which is also non missable. So, you have pretty good amount of achievements that are non-missable that you can basically do that are pretty easy to get and you have a lot of them that are distorted that you have to do to be able to beat the game so as long as you can do all these you get the missable one which is only the complete puzzle in less than minutes the game is pretty doable and pretty quick and easy obviously in 40 minutes so that should do it for part one we will be doing part two and stay tuned for that Moving on to game number 20, which is The Journey Down Chapter 2. Also came out last year of June of 2018. Now, there are other guides on YouTube to watch. So as long as you watch, look this game up on YouTube. There's different people's guides for it. They're all pretty decent, so go ahead and check any one you want out. The game should only take you around an hour, hour and a half. So it's a little bit on the longer side. Because the game is a little bit longer overall and I haven't seen any quicker video guide that would get it done any faster there's also 14 achievements in this game as well and the achievements always follow you get one for completing the game you get one for reaching the port you get one for escaping from prison you get one for it's it's called dumpster diving where the thing says oh my head you get one for escaping from poor R2 you get one for it's not the fire of the gods, but it's close enough. You get one for challenge the lighthouse lamp, change the lighthouse lamp. Excuse me. You get one for give the blueprints to Martin. You get one for give a new wheel to Reynolds. You get one for rescuing Kito. You get one for romantic action adventure, if you know what I mean. You get one for recovering the journal, and the secret achievements are prank call. Club Timba and read the two magazines of the Amardo Co. office. So, I'm not quite exactly sure which means the story related and missable right out of hand, but I went through with the video guide and I had no issues in getting these achievements. They're all pretty straightforward and easy. Like I said, about an hour and a half. Pretty doable, pretty easy game. These games aren't too bad, but I would suggest you skip through all the dialogue. All the cutscenes if you want to make it faster if you're trying to make a run like I did. But overall, it's story not too bad if you want to really enjoy it. It's kind of a funny little game series if you want to actually get down and to you know figure out what you're actually doing. It's pretty funny as well. But, like I said, make it quicker. Just skip everything. And we move on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 21, which is obviously the Journey Down Chapter 3. Also came out last year in July of 2018, so a little after you know June the first few came out. Another 14 achievements. Also, people have multiple people have guides on YouTube for this game as well. Another hour, hour and a half game. I haven't found one any quicker than that, so not too bad for time. 
So at these end of the game series, it's kind of running out of quick and easy half an hour to an hour games, but these ones aren't too bad. So if you can squeeze these games in, it's not too bad for an hour and a half. Moving on to the achievements, you get one for completing the game, you get one for rescuing Professor Moorhead, you get one for escape from the Sicilis airship, you get one for get the horn of Awa Khan, you get one for place the bombs on the skyscraper and escape, you get one for return to Saint Armando, you get one that's called Bloody Hell, you get one for raid the Armando Co skyscraper, you get one for that's a pretty long drop. You get one for resuscitate Gabby. You get one for reception must really be bad around these parts. And the secret achievements are annoy everyone with the air horn. You get one for send the monkey to gather all possible fruits. And you get one for get free juice from the friendly vendor. Now, the two most annoying achievements in the game, depending upon how you want to look at one of them. First off, the air horn. As soon as you get that air horn in the game, basically you will be going through watching the guy, and as long as you just do what he does, you won't miss this achievement. But it can be a bit of a pain in the ass if you don't do it when he does it and you miss it, because some of them might not be available at the certain point. So if you mess one up, you gotta do the entire game all over again. So don't miss a person with the air horn. There are only a select few people you can really do with basically all like the main people you can interact with in the game to do things with anyway so just make sure you keep that in mind if you want to just kind of spam everybody just to be safe go for it but the guy shows you in the video just fine I had no problem missing the achievement and I got it just fine so don't worry about that one and the send the monkey to gather all possible fruits now, for some reason when I was trying to click on the monkey and all this other stuff I ended up getting the boat and thinking I missed the achievement and left the island and then oh, had to come back for it. It's not too missable as long as you make him grab all the extra fruits. So it's not too big of a deal. I mean it can be a bit of annoyance because all I need to do is have him grab you. I think it was like one or two things and that was it but you can make him grab other things especially when you find the secret page in this book to grab a coconut and then you get that achievement for that. It's not too big of a deal. Make sure you pay attention to the video guide and you should have no problem. Another easy hour and a half game, and we'll be moving on to the next game. Moving on to game number 22, which is a game called Black and White Bushido. You may have seen this game or heard of it by now. It's been out for a couple years as of May in 2017. The game has got 12 achievements. I may have got to mention the last game's got 14. All of those guys have 14 achievements in the journey downs. Anyway, back to this game. It's a really quick and easy game, but you need to have four controllers to get an achievement, and you can do a multiple controller thing for a couple of the achievements to make your life a hell of a lot easier. This is where I ran out of time at the very end of my little session, so I'll be going through this here and showing you some things how to do this. This game should only take you about an hour or so. Maybe you can not mop it up an hour and a half at the very most. It shouldn't take you two hours. Maybe you had some issues with one of them. So. You will get an achievement for killing an enemy from stealth movement while in your own color. Pretty easy, you go invisible with, you know, whatever color you are, kill somebody. No big deal. Get 10 double kills. Get, excuse me, get a double kill 10 times. Pretty simple. As long as you go into deathmatch and have a bunch of guys running around, then just kind of go out to town them all. You shouldn't get that, no problem. Kill an enemy with the shuriken with screen swapping. Now you can do those two controllers, have your other guys set it up across from the middle, and as soon as you go from side to side, from one screen to the other, just throw it and it should hopefully go in the middle of the screen and hit them. Pretty easy there. Win a game of capture the flag without losing a flag. So basically, you just capture the flag three times. <coughs> Excuse me there. You know, that's pretty much all you gotta do is you just gotta keep capturing the flag, make sure that they don't steal it, and constantly just be spamming the flag and capturing until you win. Simple as that. Kill an enemy just before they capture the flag 10 times. This can be a bit of a bitch. You could do it with the AR, or you can do it with the control if you want. It's right when the flag literally is at the very, very tip of being captured when you see your color just barely visible, and if you kill them, they'll count. I did a hide in the background so that way they didn't know I was there if it was my color and then just sit there hide the background or you could use the controller and it'll work that way just as well. Get one for playing a four player local co-op one game. 
pretty simple. All you do is get your four controllers, load them all up. You can use guests, so there you go for that. Use the guests. Go in there and do that, and then be done with the game and get that achievement. Kill an enemy after teleporting from above ten times. Now, this one can be a bit of a bitch. You can do it with the second control, which is the easiest thing you can do for the achievement. The AI will be a bit of a pain in the ass. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a smoke bomb, and you're going to jump above your your, your the controller, and you're going to press the B button. And after you press the B button, you will basically press it again to teleport, and press down X to do a down slash. And as, as long as you're doing a down slash in midair towards them and kill them with that down slash, it'll count. Pretty easy. Clash in midair ten times. Now you might get this with the AI, or yeah, the AI, or you could do another controller. Basically, you just kind of use two controllers, position them so you can keep track of this in your head because you're gonna want to press both, you know, at the same time, in the opposite directions toward each other, forward X, and hopefully you won't be swinging in midair and clash. You see it ten times for that achievement. You get one for you slice up the shark one time. It's on one of the maps called Chipyard. You just slice the shark for achievement. Get 10 kills while on the water. You can do this in Sage Waterfall or any other map that's got water and stay in the water and you can just kill them. Get over 300 in challenge mode and get over 3000 in challenge mode. Now you have little um, challenges that appear in the screen in the top left. So as long as you keep doing those without dying, so you do it in you know the random between your deathmatch game so let's make sure you know excuse me that I don't think you can do it in deathmatch I think it's just challenge mode but make sure you do it in challenge mode and you just do those challenges that's what's gonna give you the most points not getting the kills the kills won't really count too much it can be a bit of a pain in the ass it took me a little bit to get it but as long as you just keep trying to get those easier ones and clear that board and running around Try and stay alive and kill things and try and stay in, you know, as invisible as much as you can. I think the longer you keep the challenges up, the more enemies are going to spawn to a certain limit. So it's best if you can clear the board as fast as you can because then it's more enemies are going to be on the screen. So more chances for them to kill you. So as long as you get that achievement, that'll be your hardest one in the game. And we'll be moving on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 23, which is a game called Deployment. This game has been out as of October of last year. Which is surprising because it's got online elements, which is dead as hell. Which is a pretty decent game. I uh, love the achievements in the game. I ended up having some issues with it for some reason. For when I was trying to do the actual game, and it wasn't spawning my character, or I would die and afterwards not be able to spawn. So I wasn't getting any progress game in the game done. But the game is, I would say, maybe a 45 to an hour long game. It shouldn't take you any, any longer than an hour. No way it takes you two hours. This game is really simple. As long as you go through in the top of the screen, the very menu, main menu where you have your options, you go through and you select like your mods and all these little, little accessories for your classes. So you set those up to the way you want, probably either most damage or health, which will give you the best survivability, I would say. And you should be just fine. As long as you go through those and set those up first, after that, you're gonna be gonna go with the, your little tutorial and doing that without dying when they use some achievements. So these are the achievements followed, they're pretty easy. You get 10 kills, these are all in one match by the way, 10 kills with the gunner, you get 10 kills with the laser, 10 kills with the pyro, 10 kills with the rocketeer, 10 kills with the sniper. All those are in one game, so keep that in mind. So as long as you get 10 kills in one game for each of those classes, pretty simple. You get an achievement for finishing the match with it collecting at least 15 boosts. So if you're on the map, you'll see little icons and you'll you'll definitely know what they are because the game will show you in the tutorial. So grab 15 of those in one match for another achievement. You get another achievement for capturing all systems on a level. So just go through and capture everything, just keep cycling through it after they take it. You should have no problem getting that achievement as well. Finish a match collecting only one boost. So just pick up one boost and then run around the match. And as simple as that, just don't pick anything else up. Once the game ends, you get your achievement for that. So you get another one for winning a match without capturing any systems. So in my opinion, the best, you know, character you want to pick is the Rocketeer guy. So set him up for the most you can for damage, what I did. 
and just don't capture thing and just run around with the rockets and blasting your thing. I did this my first try. It sounds hard, but it's super easy. Just run around and kill everything until time runs out, and you should be able to get first place and no problem. If not, just go ahead and try it again. It shouldn't take you more than a couple tries or so, because enemies really die pretty quick with those rockets. All right, you got another achievement for dying in the tutorial. So once you in the tutorial, die in the tutorial, and then you get one for do not die in the tutorial. And that is as easy as that. The game isn't too bad. It shouldn't take you any more than an hour at the very most. As long as you run through, you get all the kills. And capturing everything without capturing. You know, not capturing. Winning without capturing. So, pretty simple game. Hopefully you don't have any issues like I did without the spawning. That really threw me out for a while there and wasted me some time. So, moving on to the next game. Alright, moving on to game number 24. We are almost done. We've only got two more games to go through, and you'll have your 25,000 gamers for you guys. Alright, game number 24 is a game called Mechanica. Another game that came out in November of 2018. There is 30 achievements in the game, which seems a little bit overwhelming. But there is a video guide on true achievements and also on YouTube. That's a link you know, to YouTube. That takes you roughly around 35 minutes at the very most. So... The game is pretty quick and easy. It might take you like 50 minutes or so because some of the dialogue options go really, really fast and you need to make certain choices to actually be able to get these achievements and to follow along. And I end up screwing up one of the achievements and a couple of achievements and not actually getting a couple in this run and decided not even to worry about it because I was going to waste time just to go back to the game again. So make sure you pay very close attention. And one of the ones I messed up was at the very beginning of the game is you be on your computer and you have this little quiz make sure you answer the right quiz because basically it takes till the end of the game to get the package to get that achievement the other one was for not using any clues which is clicking on your cantina for a clue which I don't ever remember even doing in the first place so I didn't get that on my run so make sure you don't click on that cantina and your little inventory that shows your backpack and all that stuff because that will avoid that achievement right off the bat and I also missed one for this I didn't know what was going on in the game because there's no actual talking so there's this one of those achievements where you have to make a save and come back and use that same item what you know for something else for achievement which, which is the dirty sock basically you get a dirty sock in your brother's room and you go to wash it for achievement so save before you do that wash it reload it keep that sock and then give it to the cat outside next to the garage for another achievement so with those in mind let's go over the rest of the achievements you get one for you interrupted the poor girl while she was in the toilet, which is the very beginning of the game. You get one for you try to leave the school, which is touching the electric fence and getting fried, beginning of the game. You get one for you flush the dirty toilet in the school, beginning of the game. You get one for you exchange your meal for some spray cans, so also the beginning of the game. You get one for you couldn't stand Denny's smelly socks, which I was telling you about, the sock achievement where you make that save, and you also get the achievement here you made. Manson, the cat happy with Dennis the Socks, which is also the achievement. You going for you got your project Sill Charge poster? I don't even know. By Mango Protocol. So after you run through some stuff in the game, you'll be getting that. You get one for you won the Robo Podcast quiz, which is the one that basically towards the end of the game I told you about before that I missed the quiz, but it's at the beginning of the game. But you get the package towards the end of the game when you go back. So you get a portable TV thanks to your trolling proficiency. You get one for you disguise yourself as Grandma Rosemary. You get one for you discover your grandma grandpa's magazines in the hidden safe box. You get one for you fix the gate to of great sacrifice. You get one for you on the Ninja Turtle quiz. You get one for you discover the end of Grandpa's story. You get one for you got the projectiles. You get one for you got the ignition system. You get one for you got the shrapnel. You get one for you got the flammable liquid. You get one for you got the multimedia recorder. You get one for you got the reflective panels. You get one for you got the saw disc. You get one for um yeah multimedia player. I was like looking like, like wait what another one okay yeah player and record two separate things. You get one for the microwave emitter. You get one for you got the transmission chain. You get one for you got the propellant. You get one for you get the air compressor. You get one for you discover Nika's secret lab. You get one for you completed Mecha Nika project. So basically, all these other achievements are all these components that you get for achievements for. And then you basically get all those components. And then you get achievement for going into her lab. 
and then you get one for finalizing all that to complete the actual robot. So, as long as you do all that, you get all those achievements, and you also will get one for if you didn't spend any money to complete a Mechanica. So, that's a pretty big one there. You'll be getting money throughout the game by your dad and your grandma. So, as long as you don't have to go through and spend any money to... I think one of them was a possibility you could have spent it for uh, fixing the blowtorch somehow. I'm not sure exactly how. I never did even try for that, which no big deal. I know there's one for the Ninja Turtle quiz. If you fail the Ninja Turtle quiz, you will have to pay money, I think, to actually leave the area. There might be other ways in the game to spend money. I'm not exactly sure. But as long as you watch the video guide, you should have any problem not having to actually worry about spending your money. And, of course, when I told you about that I messed up somehow, is completing Mechanico without a clue, which is by clicking on that cantina in your backpack. So as long as you don't do that, and not spend your money, and doing else, you should get this game done within half an hour, maybe 45, 50 minutes, depending upon. If you're trying to be really careful with the dialogue, and make sure you do the right options to get through the game as quickly as you can without messing up. That's it for that game. We are moving on to the last game. Alright, we are moving on to game number 25, the final game of all of these games. I hope you guys stuck with this entire video and watched most of it, if not all of it, to get all of this good information on any of these games you might want to know about and actually be able to complete the game in under the time frame that is required, making this game possibly on your radar to do, knowing that it's easier than it may or may not have been, you know, available to you. So, moving on to the last game. Which is Siggy, a fart for Melusina. You may have heard of this game. It came out in September of last year, in 2018, for 17 achievements. This game can be done in a half an hour. If you uh, pay attention <laughs> and kind of actually know a little bit about the game beforehand and watch some videos or something, it might help you run about a little easier. Considering that you have to get this time to achievement, which is another one of the ones where I kind of screwed it up and had to actually go through it a couple times. So, with that in mind, you have to go through the game in half an hour and you have to 100% the game. So keep that in mind. I tried it my first try, I think I did it fast enough, but apparently I was a little bit shy of that. Considering that, I was kind of taking my time through the enemies a little more than I should have. So, forget all that crap. Basically, pay attention to either the shoe achievements, got also pictures of every secret location. Also, Bad Driver has a video guide if you want to watch that. Check that out for the same information. Basically, what I would recommend you do is that you use one of the two information sources to find out where the secret areas are kind of ahead of time. Go into the level, pay attention to that secret area, and just rush through it. Rush the enemies, kill as much as you can, try to, uh, since you'll be going through all the secret areas and grabbing extra lives, try not to obviously die too much, but it's not a big deal if you do die a few times here and there, it won't hurt your time too much at all, just as long as you can manage to get through the levels, grab all the letters, which is also required, so make sure you grab all the letters and do all the secret areas, and as long as you do that, through every level, you should be just fine. Now for the bosses. Obviously, once you've read the weak points, which is usually, you know, behind them, or they will point it out to you in the game, which is pretty obvious the weak points, so obviously the boss can be a little bit trickier. Just try and kill him as fast as you can, the final boss in the game. Every time he jumps, if you're close enough, but not too close, you can get under him. The best one, obviously, is when he jumps more at you. To get behind them to get the most damage on them, but you can if you want to rush it to get behind them to get those extra shots to finish them off faster. So, your achievements are Under Pressure, which is Fart for Melusina, which is still related, cannot be missed. You get one for killing 100 zombies. Yeah, you should not miss that. You should get one for clearing all the caves. Pretty easy there. You get one for collect all of the ziggies. You get one for collecting a thousand coins through going through the game. You get one for finding the long lost golden grail. You get one for finding the long lost golden crown. You get one for finding the long lost golden talisman. You get one for finding the uh, uh, hard you find and almost out of reach, which is the golden lady, which is on level 19 in the cave. So, 
you get one for beating all of the bosses. So you get one for beating Blind John, you get one for beating Steel Horse, and you get one for be defeating the Kolos Tyrol, and you get one for defeating Ivan Stink Up. You also will get an achievement for finding the apple. Obviously, you'll get one for, like I told you before, beating it under 30 minutes with 100%. You will get an achievement for getting 2,500 coins. And you will be getting an achievement for, there she goes again, which is at the very end of the game, and it's story that it cannot be missed. That's a deal for the game. Like I said, as long as you can do all of this, finding everything under half an hour of letters, all these little side collectibles, as long as you run through as fast as you literally can, you should be just fine on your very first playthrough. Alright guys, that should do it for all my game guides for these, so I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. I will try to be making more of these if you think it was helpful or not. Please let me know in the comments below, and maybe some constructive criticism to let me know if I can improve in any way. Thanks, you guys. I will be catch you later.